Ladies and gentlemen, Silent Mike back with another video. Today we're gonna to be talking about longevity and strength sports. How long can you power lift? How long can you do strongman? How long can you Olympic weight lift? How long does your career last here in the strength game? Pretty good questions, good feedback from the last videos. You guys like to sit in and talk in the chat in the raw, unfiltered me. So comment below what you guys want me to cover. We'll cover it in the next video. Give it a thumbs up, be sure to subscribe. Let's get into it. People wanna know how long they think a good powerlifting career can uh, go on and what I ask first or what we need to define first is what do you think a power lifter is? I know a lot of people think you know the sport of powerlifting is the squat bench and deadlift Do you have to compete in powerlifting put on the singlet throw down in a, in a certified meet to be a power lifter? Okay, we can go that route We can also just say if you squat bench and deadlift often and try to increase those one rep maxes You may also be a power lifter. I don't really give a crap semantics to me all you little go hards you do whatever you want. Um, but for the sake of this conversation, let's talk about competitive powerlifting and let's look at the upper echelon. Often when we're talking about longevity or how much you can squat, how much you can do this, how much you can do that, whether it's basketball, football, powerlifting, strongman, we look to the top to kind of guide the way because that's the optimal, right? The, the best one in the world doing it. Now, if you're looking at longevity of career in competitive powerlifting, I cannot say as some master historian, I've been in the game probably 10 years really reading and digging into the sport. I've talked to a lot of people that have been around for a long time, but I'm not the end all be all on history here, so take it with a grain of salt. But I can't say that there's someone doing it in competitive powerlifting or competitive strongman longer or better than other sports. I think your career is much, much shorter. Uh, and that's a couple of factors. Obviously, the external load, the stimulus of squat bench deadlift is a lot more on the body and maybe even the mind, um, arguably, than other sports. You know, basketball takes a beating on your body, but there's guys that have been in the NBA for 21 plus uh, years or 20 plus years being the absolute best on the entire planet. The Kobe Bryant's, the Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's, the Jason Kidd's. These guys have played 20 years at the highest level of basketball and that's 20 years getting paid. Those guys have also played 365 years as children growing up. So you have to take that into account as well. How many power lifters have been doing it since age 12, 365 days a year, then make a professional career about it and be the best in the world? I think the longevity potential in even professional soccer, I think there's soccer players that have played at the highest level in the world for 25 to 30 years which is much longer than I've ever seen any powerlifter, strongman, Olympic weightlifter be at the height or the peak of their performance. There are a couple powerlifters that have been around a long time. You know, Dave Ricks, Ed Cohn had a pretty long career. Um, there's a lot of guys that have pushed the limits of their success, not only being able to lift, which is one conversation, but being optimal or the best in the world at the time. You know, I don't know, you guys might have more uh, names in mind, but what comes to mind for me is Jen Thompson and Dave Ricks. Uh, not only are they a little bit uh, older than some of the, the, the newer lifters coming up, but they've been doing it longer and they're still the best in the world, if not in the conversation. The difference again is even, uh, you know, interviewing uh, Jen for a while, a uh, different podcast, she hasn't power lifted since she was 12. So the longevity then is obviously much less. She's done it for maybe 10, 12 years, really, really competitive, 10, maybe 20 years, really, really competitive. But how long you've been doing that sport and how long you've been at the top is much less than football, basketball, soccer, et cetera. Uh, football, I guess, is a little bit less than basketball and soccer, but you get what I'm saying. Uh, strongman's another one. How many people have been at the top peak of the, of the sport, peak performance, for that long? I think, uh, you know, Brian Shaw's had a hell of a career doing it all through his 20s and now he's in his mid-30s, still very, very competitive, still staying healthy. Puchanowski, a couple others, uh, Z uh, Zadrunas, there's a couple guys that have had long careers, but long and strongman might be eight, nine, 10 years being competitive or in the conversation and again, most of the majority of those guys either started out as a gym bro or played a different sport. I believe Brian played college growing up. Uh, I believe Eddie Hall was a swimmer growing up. It's not like they were doing strongman. So the conversation is so different than other sports. When you compare it to other sports, the longevity of powerlifting or strongman, I don't think it's there. The next step I want to get into is the longevity of all these sports or all of these athletes in particular. I, again, I'm no scientist, I just think logically, and the reason LeBron James, the reason Brian Shaw are the best in the world, not only are they talented, not only are they genetic freaks, not only do they put in the hard work, but to put in the hard work as a genetic freak for a long period of time is part of your freakiness. 
There's a reason that LeBron James and Brian Shaw are less likely to get injured because they're stronger and they have better talents or, or work ethic, whatever you want to throw at them, than the average strongman, basketball player, powerlifter, etc. The more freaky you are, it doesn't directly just say like you're more powerful. The chances are if you have stronger ligaments, stronger bones, stronger muscles, uh, you can adapt to stimulus better, chances are you're going to get also less injured. So your career would be longer. So this chances of you know the average human walking down the street to have a very long career in powerlifting, let alone even have a career in powerlifting, career because you don't get paid uh, moving on to a higher level the chances start to get lower again in strength sports the chances start to get lower as well one less freaks are playing these sports because other ones are paying you so people are going on or at least have some honor of heading to the olympics so they're doing olympic weightlifting maybe even football the talent pool in these sports is starting to grow slightly just because of the popularity of the sport so the chances are that if you were a freak in 2012 in powerlifting you're no longer that freak you're very mediocre because the pool has grown and different freaks have shown up and found squat bench deadlift and they're much stronger than you and they're going to outlast you most likely as well again because they're stronger than you and their genetics say so now if we're talking the casual lifter that likes to do some squat bench deadlift doesn't hit the gas so hard takes some time off has really really smart programming good warm-up routine good nutrition and sleep can you make a long life long career out of powerlifting probably and again i say career i just mean doing the hobby really not making the money so i think that majority of people can squat bench deadlift for a very long time and it can be part of your workout routine and protocol but if you're trying to push the upper limits or even be in the top five percent of power lifters for a long period of time i haven't seen it happen yet so i just happen to think it's unlikely i think it's more happen likely to happen in these other sports basically because of the wear and tear on the body. Now, again, I've played basketball for a very long time. Uh, I played it for 15 years and my knees still hurt when I try to go play basketball. Uh, the beating is there, but the uh, huge uh, injuries or just chances that you plateau in a sport like powerlifting or strongman are higher in my opinion. Especially when you get to upper echelon, PEDs are involved, as many of us know, or maybe some don't. Performance enhancing drugs do often grow the muscle and not the ligaments or tendon as fast. So some of these upper echelon powerlifters, strongman, etc., bodybuilders that may be using some PEDs uh, will have chances of, of tearing a muscle a little bit greater than someone who doesn't take those type of enhancements. Those injuries obviously will add up and, and, and slow your range of motion, slow your strength, slow your progress over time, uh, as well as obviously the, the ultimate beating of just stimulus and progressive overload over time. What does this all mean for me? What does it all mean for you? That's kind of up for you to decide how hard you want to push something, where you want to take something. Again, these sports don't really pay off. Everyone thinks it's cool to you know, deadlift 600, 700, 800 pounds on Instagram and all of a sudden you're going to be famous and, and having a check and getting supplement sponsors left and right. Uh, if you love the pursuit of strength, by all means, get after it. Um, but know that, in my opinion, and probably many others, let me know in the comments below, chances are that career as a competitive athlete or going to the highest level won't last very long. There's not many powerlifters, even the natural ones in the US natural and USAPL, I say with quotations because who knows, right? All we know is the drug test we get. That's a whole nother conversation. See the movie Icarus. But uh, those careers, I haven't seen anyone at the top levels besides maybe a Jen Thompson uh, for over 10 years either. Uh, the rain or the chances that you stay high in these sports is very, very low. It's competitive for one, two, the body takes wear and tear, three, there's new freaks coming about. To wrap it all up, if you're taking from childhood all the way up, people will say, well, I'm 50 and I'm squatting 800 pounds. That's great, but chances are you didn't start squatting competitively or heavy until you were 40. Can you be strong in your 30s and 40s? Yes, I think you can, but not if you started powerlifting in your teens. I haven't seen it yet, so until that day, you may prove me wrong. Salam Mike. I'm in here. Comment below what you want me to cover in the next video. I appreciate you. I'm on Twitch every single day. Link in the bio. 50% facts. New on iTunes. Me and Jim McD are back together covering more informational topics for you to get learned and hopefully entertained. Appreciate you. I'm out of here.